Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys are all doing well tonight. I wanted to um, go ahead and have a Q&A for tonight's uh, class uh, question and answer and then uh, just a general discussion uh, because we do have a lot of new users and everything and um, the uh, uh, with that there's obstacles that everybody even even existing users and all there's obstacles that we you know you run into and stuff so I thought uh, tonight would be a good night to have a Q&A class and um, be able to kind of uh, answer some of those questions that you guys are running into and stuff. Uh, welcome, Kevin. Uh, Stephen Allen, uh, what type of collet? The uh, R20 uh, collet is what the spindles use. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> uh, ER20. 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 I said R20, but it's ER20. Um, and everything. Collect. I knew what you meant, Stephen. Uh, what collect does the spindle use? I know exactly what you meant. This... Autocorrect. Those darn autocorrects. Hey, Bobby. Hey, uh, Stephen, Kevin, uh, Howard, Ronnie. How are you all doing? So, ER20 collets. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Now, uh, how this is going to work, basically, uh, we, you can ask questions whether it's regarding to TNG or Vetric software, uh, if it's Vetric VCarb Desktop Pro or Aspire, uh, either or. Um, and uh, if there's an obstacle that you've run into or a question you have or something you just quite, can't quite figure out, uh, whatever it may be, the floor is open. Uh, you can ask your question and I will answer them one by one. Um, and uh, we'll try to get through as many questions and answers as we can uh, and uh, see if we can help you get past your obstacles for your next project in case you run into these uh, issues again and you know how to answer them now you know the answer to them all right um, we'll start off uh, with a simple one Kevin uh, asks, can you load Aspire on more than one computer yes you can load your Vetric software on up to three computers uh, on up to three computers. Now, uh, the uh, general license allows you to load up to three computers, um, meaning that uh, if you have three PCs and you have your software loaded on all three PCs, uh, you're, you can run those PCs uh, basically at the same time. Um, if you try to load it on a fourth, uh, it won't work. Uh, but now, let's say if your computer crashes uh, and you need to re-download the software, uh, you can re-download it uh, on, onto another computer and you didn't lose a license you just only have three computers that could basically run consecutively at one time uh, with the Vetric software all right let's see here hey William happy Cyber Monday to you too um, Howard Groves uh, that get-together you had in Indiana are you having another one and if so uh, or uh, will you do one in Canada we are going to have more of those. The uh, DWC Users Group meeting, uh, it was our first annual in Indiana. It went very well. We had a great turnout. We had a, uh, a, a conference room of about that could hold about 30 people. We had 31 in there, so everyone was nice and snug and stuff. Um, and uh, it went very well. Uh, we were very pleased with the outcome and the results. And uh, give me one second. This is a customer trying to get into the group. Stand by.
All right, okay. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and get back to our Q&A. We had to uh, answer a few questions. Uh, I had to answer a question on the phone. Let's turn that phone off. Uh, we're not gonna do that anymore. And uh, let's go ahead and get through this. Now, uh, as far as the user group meeting, it was a great meeting. Uh, we had a great time. So yes, we are gonna be doing them again. We're gonna, we're gonna pick some locations around uh, and do them. As far as doing one in Canada, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure uh, if that would go. Now, we could definitely talk to uh, Stockroom Supply or something and, and see about uh, doing some type of gathering up there uh, and, and everything for our Canadian customers and stuff for sure. Uh, but right now, we haven't even laid out the schedule for other places. I know we want to do one in Florida at some point in time, possibly North Carolina and, and, and other places and stuff. We, <coughs> excuse me. We haven't laid out the uh, schedule and all. Uh, let us get uh, get that all figured out for this upcoming year, and we will definitely let you know in the Digital Wood Carver Owners Facebook group. All right. Now, uh, Bobby Bobby Orr asks, where can where do you find your DXF files to cut? Well, uh, Bobby, I create my DXF files. Um, they uh, they come from photos that are traced. Uh, the software will trace them, and then I export them out as a DXF, so I can trace an image. Uh, and then I can save that that tracing as a DXF file so I never have to trace that image again type of thing. Uh, but there's a lot of places that you can find DXF files online. Um, MakeCNC.com for 3D puzzle uh, DXF files and things which is really cool. Uh, you can, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, vector files out there. Basically if you search, um, let's say, rattlesnake vector the keyword vector you'll find all different types of file formats in dxf being one of them but uh, uh my dxfs i generate from photos that i've traced images and clip art and things that i've traced and stuff hopefully that answers your question um let's see here uh jimmy says is the fourth axis setting file for tng uh in the facebook group Yes, it is, uh, Jimmy, but also there's a video. Please check out the video uh, for uh, making profiles in the TNG for your three and four axis unit. Uh, this keeps the setting files separated uh, so that if you make changes in the three axis settings, it doesn't make changes in the four. It keeps them separated. If you don't create profiles uh, to separate the two three axis versus four axis, uh, then you could actually, uh, as you're changing setting files in the TNG software, it could change the setting files of the fourth axis if they're kind of together. So let's separate them by profiles. There is a video on how to do that. And yes, uh, the files are in the uh, Facebook group under the file section. Uh, let's see here. Aspire TNG issue uh, rotated my carving 90 degrees and recalculated the toolpath, saved and opened in TNG, and it did not change the X and Y axis rotation. Um, William, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's look at this uh, real quick. So one, um, when you uh, changed your rotation uh, of your project, um, did you change the board orientation or did you just rotate the actual vector design the design and then recalculate the tool pass um, also uh, if you open it up in TG and it didn't change the orientation of your XY you can actually rotate in the TNG software and I'll show you where that is let's pop over to uh, the other screen here and let's see if we can Let me get over there. And so if I bring in a file, let's find a sample file.
And let's say that I needed this uh, rotated 90 degrees and I did it in the software, but for some reason it didn't rotate and all and I need to rotate it. Well, I can come up to program uh, in the software and I can come down to rotate and on the rotate screen, I can type in 90 degrees and click OK to rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, so I can do it in the software on the fly there in the TNG software itself. Um, or I can go into uh, the Vetric software and just make sure that I recalculate the toolpath and I'm actually opening up the saved, the newly saved recalculated toolpath. Because if you had the project opened in Vetri or in your TNG and you went back and changed the orientation and you saved it, you've got to reopen that file in TNG. It's not going to automatically update the visual in TNG. You've got to reopen that newly saved file. Okay. All right. Hopefully that answers that question. Let me know if it doesn't. William. All right. Yeah, there you go, Stephen. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, we won't we won't hold one for a weekend holiday for sure. Uh, Stephen Allen, uh, VectEasy.com. Uh, Stephen, in the chat room, uh, give a little description of what VectEasy is. Is it a way to turn images into vectors, or is it just a way to create vectors, sort of? in uh, DXFs and things, uh, almost sort of like uh, Inkscape uh, software. All right, evening Jarvis. William, let me know if that answered your question uh, and uh, let's make sure that it did. Um, and if not, uh, let's, uh, we can run a sample we can run a sample here. Let's uh, open up an existing file. And let's see here. Documents. Gotta find all my files. All right, so uh, this is a bad example. Let me make my board bigger. Let me make my board bigger. Uh, let's go 24 by 24, just for a moment. Okay, now one of two things. If I have this design opened up in TNG already, the toolpath and everything, and I come in and I make a change, uh, you know, and rotate this 90 degrees on the design and stuff, and then come back over and recalculate the toolpath. Um, oh, that's a merged toolpath. Bear with me. Let me undo that. Let's go V carve. Let's get rid of the border here for a minute and calculate. And let's take and do a profile cut with the V-carve. Uh, let's go an eighth of an inch deep with the V-bit on the line. Calculate that. All right. So let's say that I have, uh, you know, this design and I've rotated in here. Well, when I save the tool pass, when I save the tool pass, um, I should, I say should, but I should. Amazing Grease. Save. When I open the TNG software, hopefully TNG doesn't cause any buffering and things, uh, but when I open the TNG software, it should come in already rotated. Now, if I had this design, I'm gonna leave it open, right? I'm gonna leave it open in here. I'm gonna come back to my Vetric and I'm going to re-rotate this design back negative 90 
and click apply and I'm gonna recalculate uh, let's get rid of this one delete that one I'm gonna recalculate these tool paths and I'm gonna save these tool paths replacing that existing file well if I look back in my TNG it's not gonna automatically update it in TNG I have to go in and reopen that file to get the newly rotated file so make sure you did that and if you did then I'm not sure exactly what happened uh, but you can always rotate the design in TNG if you need to okay so All right, uh, yeah, give it give it a try and um, see if uh, see if that you know works out and stuff for you. Um, if not, you can always rotate it in the in the in the TNG software if you need to. Okay, all right, great questions so far. Come on, keep them coming, keep them coming, fire away. Uh, any obstacles that you guys are running into, now's the time to ask. This is the perfect time uh, to get the help uh, that you need. And um, now is the time to ask and uh, get answers uh, to those questions and everything. Um, for sure. Now, also, um, William, uh, when I had this board... Uh, in you know a smaller size when I had it my 24 by I believe it was six uh, yep um, if I wanted to rotate this design then I need to come in and change uh, the six and 24 I need to change the orientation of the board uh, and then rotate the design and, and save that of course Okay, so uh, uh, give it a try again. If not, uh, jump on the phone with me, jump on TeamViewer, and let's take a look at it together. Not now, while I'm streaming live, after the stream, or tomorrow, or any time like that, you know, uh, we can go in. Um, while we're waiting for some next questions and all, let's talk about uh, some of the things upcoming. Now, you might have seen, if you were part of the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group and everything, you might have seen me post a picture of some dovetails. Um, and uh, what we got is, uh, and they're about to go up on the website and everything, we've got a set of brackets, almost like the riser blocks, the two inch riser blocks that give you more height in your Z. We have a set of brackets that can mount to your CNC uh, that will actually bring the whole gantry forward, probably about three inches or so, uh, that allows it to carve off the front of the table. Um, and uh, by doing that, uh, we have the ability to uh, do things like finger joints and dovetails and mortises and tenons. Uh, uh, you can always do mortises on the table as well. But, uh, you know, your tenon cuts, um, there, there's going to be a lot of things that we can do uh, by being able to carve off that end of the table and stuff. So uh, that new function is going to be available for the 2440, uh, whether it's a vintage model 2440, you know, pre-2016 pre, pre uh, or 15. Or a later model, um, and uh, we're working on the actual jig uh, that you uh, you can you know uh, purchase uh, that um, for holding the material and stuff uh, that mounts to your table and everything off the front and everything. So uh, that's coming down the pike. As far as the jig, that's going to be you know probably uh, after the first of the year that it, it may be available for the market. But the actual blocks are going to be coming up over the next couple of weeks, uh, next next week or so. Uh, they'll be available and everything. All right, so uh, Javi's Woodshop, question. I see a number of different techniques and programs to convert G-code back to STL, uh, assuming we didn't listen to you and forgot to save our file. Now, Javi's, uh, the um, STL is a 3D model component, and... Uh, Generally, you can't reverse engineer a G-code. However, uh, in TNG, uh, you do have the ability uh, to export as an STL if, if um, 
it is uh, you know the uh, right type of design um, and also I'm in simulation mode so the export and everything will not work for me none of it's lit up because I'm in a simulation mode on the TNG here but uh, generally the export G code DXF CVS or STL are available but I can't take a 2d design and export it as an STL that's that that's a 3d model component I would export it out as a DXF and I would bring that DXF back in and recreate my tool pass uh, but if it was a 3d model uh, then I would be able uh, I should be able to because it is a kind of a point cloud in a sense I should be able to export it out um, as an STL uh, file now other than that there is no way to reverse engineer a g-code uh, and, and, and turn it back into your design so um, Java is the uh, the only program that I know that you can do it into something like you know your controller program the TNG and stuff I do not know of a program on the market that reverse engineers a g-code file uh, into an STL model um, now there's uh, you know there's programs that will take a point cloud uh, and, and you can export and save it as an STL but uh, that is usually your controller program uh, the reason why the controller program can do it is because technically a lot of times you might be doing digital probing or 3d digitizing and you have to be able to ex export that that file out as an STL to bring into your software for cleanup and stuff um, but I don't know of a standalone software that can take a G code and reverse engineer it. Never heard of it. Um, Ronnie Probert, uh, will you be able to give a class on the dovetail jig? Yeah, uh, I sure will. Uh, the dovetail jig, uh, let me see if, um, let me see if my, SketchUp is working. See how much buffering is going to happen when I got all these programs open. Hey, who's that woman standing on my screen? Uh, let's see here. Let's open. Uh, not put my SketchUp model on there. And of course I didn't. Let me see how many uh, Lexars I have. How many Lexars? Let me see here. Uh, Lexar 2440 files. It's not on there. So unfortunately I did not save that SketchUp file of the uh, jig. Uh, but yes. Uh, very simple setup uh, and everything once it's uh, done then uh, we're gonna be teaching and I'm gonna be teaching a class or making a video I don't know if it'll be a live class or an actual video on uh, laying out uh, the dovetails whether it be full through dovetails or half blind dovetails and then uh, other jigs and stuff so there will be a class on that uh, I know that for sure um, now as far as the jig and stuff yeah, we can include that in there. I'd like to start doing some classes from the shop uh, at the actual machine uh, and things. We're not going to, you know, mo you know, watch a project run. Now, of course, dovetails uh, only takes a few minutes to carve and stuff, so we may look at that. But definitely going to be a class on making finger joints, dovetail joints, um, through dovetail, half blind, all of that stuff. So there will be a class on that, uh, whether it is a video that I record uh, or it's a live event, either one. And tonight's class almost was a dovetail class, but since we're not quite there yet, as far as being able to carve off the end of the table, let's get our brackets and everything out there first. Uh, I didn't want to be premature in the class, so uh, hence we have a QA and a open tonight. All right. Um, yeah, Javi's, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, sorry, that's the only answer I have on reverse engineering a uh, g-code it's it's never been possible that i'm aware of uh, other than your controller program and stuff so unfortunately i don't have the best answer for that so hopefully the answer i did give was was enough um all right so um now uh 
we uh, we have some users in here that aren't part of uh, the Digital Woodcarver owners group uh, and things and um, and all. And uh, my past class videos, uh, the files, if there were files to be available, you know, they were posted in the Digital Woodcarver owners group. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to provide files and everything in the class for download links <clears throat> uh, in the in the videos for uh, the viewers that are not uh, part of Digital Woodcarver. Uh, you know, they may own other units. Uh, we have a, we have some different you know CNC users in here. So uh, right now, if you try to watch any of our classes and you're looking for files that are kind of associated with that recording or that that live event. Uh, and you're not finding them. That's because they're not there. Uh, they've been they've been posted in the Digital Woodcarver Owners Group. But the audience is growing, and it is growing be, beyond uh, the, the the Digital Woodcarver Owners. We've got a lot of different CNC owners uh, kind of popping in and joining us. Uh, Dave Gatton, uh, you know, spread the word and, and everything. So thanks for that. Uh, but I will start uh, trying to provide some files for reference uh, when you guys are going through the class where you can download. Uh, the vetric files and work along with the video and keep in mind these videos are live sessions so they're two and three hours long um, I'm gonna try with the spindle TV channel to pre-record or make recordings of classes like you would see in the vetric library of videos and all that are short to the point on the subject and everything uh, to create that balance of you know straightforward tutorials uh, versus live streams because the live streams are long and a lot of times um, it's hard to search through that two or three hour video uh, looking for a specific point on how to do this or how to do that because of the discussion involved. Now the videos are great because there is a discussion involved. You're getting a little bit more information, but a lot of times you have to weed through that information and figure out what's important to what you're looking for and all. And those short, direct, to the point videos on how to do this, how to do that, and everything are much easier to uh, digest and stuff. So you're, there's going to be a nice mixture of the two coming up uh, over the next couple of months. You'll start to see uh, more recordings and things uh, pop up on Spindle TV. Uh, and then eventually uh, SpindleTV.com, uh, the website, will be out there. And uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, hopefully there'll be places where we can get uh, models and uh, project files and all kinds of stuff. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> RC says, uh, in TNG, I used to be able to pan where the bit was carving. Not sure what has changed now, but I can only zoom in um, to, uh, it won't let me left click and grab and pan. Uh, sometimes uh, something I can, is there something I can change? So. In the TNG software, what uh, what RC is talking about is if I left click in here, I can pan uh, and zoom with my roller wheel on my mouse and stuff. I can zoom in and look where my bit is carving. Now, alternately to that, we can zoom to the position of where the router bit is at that particular moment, or we can zoom out to see our part in full screen. Uh, but panning is the left click. Now, uh, RC, if you're not able to do that, if you're not able to pan, uh, I am not sure if a uh, particular panel is closed or uh, you know uh, one of the tools is is done. What I would recommend doing is updating your, just downloading the latest update of the TNG software and running that update and because it could be a little glitch or something that you're experiencing if you can't pan. Okay, uh, but you should be able to uh, pan and all. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a, I don't think there's a menu option to change. Other, you can look under the view uh, to see if, um, because we have different views, um, different zooms, uh, we can uh, follow position, but the, you know, you can try the reset window option, but I don't know if there's anything that turns on or off the panning option, so maybe just uh, running a quick, uh, up, you know, reload or update, don't delete, just re-update, run it again, and update your software, and uh, it should fix if that's an issue that you're experiencing. Um, 
All right, so let's see here. Uh, Dropbox and sync up users and your drive. Um, ah, so Steven, uh, I'm assuming that's a recommendation to uh, create a Dropbox. Uh, and users, of course, would have Dropbox, and then whenever I drop something in the Dropbox, it updates all of them, any user that's uh, uh, linked or synced to that particular share folder, right? Great idea. That's a good way to kind of uh, do that uh, uh, for subscribers and stuff like that. Cool. All right. Uh, Jim Horton says, do you have any fancy miter corners for picture frames? Uh, do I have any fancy miter corners for picture frames? Uh, as far as uh, the actual cut, no. Um, now my picture frames, uh, I I use the molding tool path to create them and everything, and so then I can I can kind of create that profile of what I want. Uh, but as far as like fancy miter corners, like little you know heart shaped locking or whatever the case may be, uh, no, I don't. I surely don't. Uh, that is something that could be drawn out and created in the Vetric software. But, and sorry, I have the hiccups. Uh, but uh, I don't have any on hand, um, you know, because I, I, if I'm doing picture frames and carving, I'm usually using the molding toolpath, uh, meaning that, uh, let's see if I can show an example of that. Let's uh, get rid of this. <clears throat> if I draw a rectangle here in the Vetric software and uh, let me offset that inward a half an inch create sharp corners and if I come over to my uh, rectangle tool when you're creating a profile you do not use the bottom span i always start with a rectangle uh when creating a profile do not use the bottom span so uh, we can jump into node editing mode on this and just right click and delete that span um, and so if i pull this down uh, let's go right about here and i'm going to insert a point right here and i'm going to take and select this node and i'm going to hold down my shift key select this node and hit the letter y to bring them up into alignment with that first one that i selected uh let's take and turn this into a bezier curve let's pull this up let's pull this down and right about here i'm going to insert a point and right about here, I'm going to insert a point. Let's zoom in so it lets me in, click on my insert a point. And I'm gonna take, a, once again, select this node, come over here, hold down my shift, select this, and now I'm moving side to side, so I'm gonna hit the letter X on my keyboard. And I'm gonna take and turn this to a line, so I have that step down, and I'm gonna fix my curve here again. I want that nice uh, curve. Pull this down. All right, so let's say that let's assume that that's my profile. The first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that my size is going to match my offset of my rectangle here, which is a half inch. So I need this to be a half inch wide. Um, and I'm in the move tool, not the size tool. Let's go to the size tool. And on the width, I need that to be a 0.5. I'm going to keep my aspect ratio the same uh, and everything. And now with my molding tool path, I can come in here, select my profile that I want to follow, the path I want to follow, followed by the profile. And I want to create sharp corners. That's going to give me that mitered look. That's going to give me that mitered look uh, and everything. I'm going to use an eighth inch ball nose, uh, tapered ball nose. I could probably get away with a quarter of an inch. Um, and I'm going to calculate that toolpath. And what that uh, gives me is uh, a reversed toolpath, right? Don't want that reversed. So we got to come in here, open that toolpath back up. And right here, we need to right click and reverse the direction and recalculate that toolpath on that profile. 
Let's reset it and preview that selected toolpath again. Um, and uh, to get that, and let's get that red color turned off there uh, to, to kind of create that profile and everything. So my mitered corners, those sharp corners and all, that's how I do my frame. So I don't have anything fancy as far as actually drawing and cutting a miter, like milling out a fancy miter, but that's easy enough to do. Uh, imagine if that's what your intentions are. Um, imagine if, uh, let's get rid of all of this and this. And let's say that I've got this piece is, uh, let's go 18 inches in length. It's going to be two, let's go uh, two and a half inches wide. All right, let's close down this. Now I'm going to take and hold down my control key. I'm going to pull a copy down. And on that copy, I'm going to hit the number nine on my keyboard twice. And I'm going to, you know, kind of uh, pull it up here. Now, once I get my frame drawn, then of course I'm going to turn this back around so I can cut both parts out. But I'm kind of, in a, in a sense, laying out my 45 degree angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, this one here, select this last, and I'm going to use my alignment tool and make sure that I'm aligned uh, correctly uh, and everything uh, with that part. Make sure I'm nice and squared up. And let's draw our imaginary uh, 45 degree line, okay, on that part. Now, uh, how do I want to get uh, fancy here? Let's see here. Let's take and um, let's draw a circle. Let's go point, let's go a half inch. <clears throat> half inch diameter. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab this right edge here. I'm going to hold down my control key. Sorry. I'm going to grab this right edge and I'm going to snap to there. Okay. I'm going to take and I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to snap to the center of these two here and I'm going to draw a line 90 degrees straight down. Space bar to finish. Now, while I'm in my poly tool, I'm going to snap here and I'm going to come and just hover over my circle and hit the letter T on my keyboard to bring that line to its tangent, uh, to the tangent of that circle. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, hover, don't click, hover over there and hit the letter T uh, to bring that line into tangent and space bar to finish. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this line and do some trimming and I'll create this funky little heart. Uh, now, I don't want a sharp corner here uh, because I do have the radius of the router bit and stuff uh, to take into consideration. So I am gonna use my fillet tool. Uh, let's say I'm using a quarter inch end mill. So let's go an eighth of an inch radius and let's kind of just give it at that general here. And uh, this one actually is not gonna matter, but I'll do that there as well. Um, so we'll have this heart. Now I'm gonna take this heart and I'm going to come over and snap to the center there and let's rotate it 90 or 45 degrees. Let's rotate it 45 degrees, 45. Okay. And bum, bum, bum. Uh, let's go. Let's move this. Now this is just an example, guys and girls. It's not like uh, perfectly to scale. All right, now uh, with this, I'm going to uh, take and draw a uh, triangle here. Okay, I'm gonna take, use my polyline tool and I'm going to literally draw out this shape. Okay, to create that closed vector. All right, and because I drew it, it's on top. So when I select it, it's going to be selected. And now I'm going to take and uh, I'm going to uh, come in and this is going to be my boundary. Uh, and I could do it one of two ways, but uh, this will be my boundary here. 
and I should be able to come into my trim tool if this works for me. Um, I may have to kind of reverse that, but I should be able to clear everything inside of that boundary. And what happens is, is it redraws this line. So now if I take and delete that heart, I have this uh, redrawn vector, this triangle vector here that I'm gonna end up trimming into this piece here. But I need to make the mate, the mating part uh, for the uh, uh, male, right, in a sense. And so I'm going to uh, come in here and uh, let's see here. That's control Z. I'm going to leave actually that hard in there because now I'm going to take on this part once again uh, my polyline tool, not my measure tool. This is a long answer for this question, Lord of mercy. But um, it's a good little practice. So we're going to draw this out. Okay. And with this vector, of course, the only thing I need to do is come in and uh, trim, you know, this line. So now let's go ahead and clean up our parts. We're going to take this rectangle here uh, and this part here, um, which is which should be my not my upper part, my lower part here. Let me get. Uh, Let me get one of these turned off. Bear with me a second. Okay. And I'm going to take and just move this. Oh, I missed a line. That's all right. I'll be able to join it together with a straight line. Oh, no, it's still there. Uh, tricked me. Uh, let's go ahead and clean this up. So we're going to get rid of this uh, miter or this line here, this line here. So there's my male part. And then over here, we're going to trim this away and this away. There's my female part. Now, of course, uh, I may want to, uh, I've got to trim away this, uh, or this diagonal line. Let's actually uh, select both of these and then turn that off. And that way, you see I've got this vector here that kind of uh, is all by itself. So let's, let's get rid of that. It's an overlap. It's a duplicate type of thing, but it's not really a duplicate because of the simple fact uh, that it's all part of this here and I need it to be part of this frame so I'm going to go into here and I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to cut the vector here and I'll go ahead and uh, cut the vector there that should give me just this piece And I'm going to have to bump this up one, two. That way I can see my line there. Uh, delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the vector right here. Uh, go back into node editing mode and cut that vector right there. That way I can get rid of this extra... Um, line bear with me a second this will make sense in a second i can delete that and then i'm going to take my uh vector and bump it right back down one two and i'm going to rejoin oh i got an overlap somewhere uh i didn't go down twice bear with me a second one more time one more click down um now i'm going to rejoin and close that up so now I don't have any overlaps or everything. I got that cleaned up over here. I should be fine. That's all perfectly well and good. Now, uh, what I need to know is that when you know when this comes uh, together and all, it's gonna be a freaking tight fit. Uh, it's gonna be a tight fit. Now, what I can do with this is I can cut the vectors. Here and get, I can't give myself an offset in the toolpath because then that's going to offset this entire cut, uh, and I don't want to do that. I want this, you know, to be kind of a, a perfect fit and stuff. Um, I could do this, 
uh, it's a little hard to do it that way. So let's do it the easy way. I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to cut the vector here and here. Now I'm going to take that remaining selected vector and I'm going to offset it all so slightly, just a small 0.005. Um, uh, and maybe, you know, uh, 10,000, I'm going to delete my original and offset that inward just to get uh, a little bit of a separation. Uh, I could go 0 0.01 just depending on, and of course I offset the wrong one. <laughs> Let's click this one. Um, oh Lord of mercy. Let's move this down. Let me get my heart, my heart. I want to offset that one inward and you notice it went outward right don't want to go outward and so I, it's backwards so I need to go outward instead of inward so it brings it in um, and then I got to bring my motor back up one two buckle my shoe um, now I've got this offset now it's five thousandths of an inch it's super small it's gonna allow me to get just a nice glue fit and stuff but I've got to connect my vector back to that uh, that's the extend tool, ladies and gentlemen, the extend tool. Uh, we're going to extend from here to here. Okay. We're going to come in and extend from here to here. Oops. Extend from there to there. Uh, and uh, we have that extend tool and stuff uh, to reconnect ourselves. Now we can, you know, um, did you... What did I just extend to? Control Z. Um, it would help if I joined that together. Clues. All right. Now I can move this out of the way. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, I can, you know, so that's one way to kind of, that's a heart corner, you know, miter corner, but that's to give you an example. Okay. Uh, we spent enough time on that. Uh, hopefully it gives you an idea. And then of course, uh, I would rotate this piece 90 degrees, uh, and I would lay it out on my board. Um, or I could hit the number nine key on my keyboard twice, either one, uh, lay it on my board, uh, cut out the two parts and you know, I've got a fancy miter, that type of deal. All right, all right. Okay, let's go back up um, and let's see here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Kevin Wilkerson, uh, can you do a class on making internal and exterior threads? Yes, I can. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Um, now, when it comes to internal threads and everything, that's actually done in the controller program. You actually kind of hand write your G code on that. It's not going to be done in Vetric, uh, and, but I can show you, uh, using the, uh, G2 and G3 counterclockwise, your pitch and everything. I can show you how to create that G code, a, um, uh, a great, uh, a great tutorial. And then on the fourth axis, making the actual threads. Now the bit that you would use for the internal threads is a sideways V bit. You can buy those at magnate. It's actually a 90 degree V bit that actually comes off to the side of the bit, which is pretty cool. And it's a thread cutting bit in a sense. And, uh, but yes, I absolutely can. That would be a great class. It's one that I want to do. Um, hey Ronald, welcome. Let's see here. Uh, external threads, uh, on a spindle or external threads on a, whether it's on a flat table on a disc, uh, it all going to apply the same way. Uh, you won't be able to do the external threads um, uh, in your Vetric software. That's something you would have to write the G code. It's a very simple code, uh, like short lines, you know, very simple to write out. I can teach a class on that. I'd be happy to because it's a fun project. All right. Um, Jimmy said, uh, and I'm going back. I have questions that were piling up on me. Uh, in the latest settings file, uh, it was uploaded uh, by George Planick. No, uh, Jimmy, uh, that one do not open. Now, um, uh, there should be one right below that that is uploaded right underneath that that's uploaded by me, Laney Shaughnessy. Uh, George, I'm not sure. I, I have not looked at that file setting. I know somebody tried to use it once and they were a little backwards and stuff. Uh, I don't know if George set it up for his unit and it's a little different than other units but I have to go in and look at that file or 
uh, find out what it is. But no, underneath that should be a setting file, a fourth access setting file from me. That's the one you want to use. Okay. Ronald saying, I have a spindle, and after setting the spindle speed to 24,000 uh, uh, in Vetric, um, it doesn't AK. Ronald. Oh, here, he wrote it again. Okay. It doesn't always show in TNG. Um, when you are in the TNG software, uh, whatever your spindle speed is set at, uh, in TNG, uh, when you hit start on a project, uh, your spindle speed, once it gets to that line, it will show up in everything. Um, now, of course, if you have a spindle, you can adjust your spindle speed accordingly uh, in, in, in everything uh, in here if you need to slow down or speed up. With a router, guys, you cannot do that. This is only with a spindle. But Ronald, if it's not showing up, uh, or if it's not reading your spindle, uh, it, your, your spindle speed in your G code, uh, then that is where you need to call me and we jump on TeamViewer. Not now, uh, after class or tomorrow or something, you need to call me if you're, if you're not seeing it uh, when you start. Uh, then we need to look at it and find out why, why it's not and uh, get past that hurdle. Okay. Uh, Steven says, I need to put an OG uh, edge on my board. Can I use an OG bit to uh, make the cutout or should I use a straight bit first? No, you can use your OG bit. You you know, uh, if you have an OG bit uh, that doesn't have the bearing on it, uh, I've got one. I don't have it with me. It's out in the shop. Uh, you want it to be plungeable. But now, of course, if you can't find one, which they're out there, uh, but if you can't find one and you happen to have one with a bearing on it, you can take that bearing off and mill off mill off that little uh, nub where the bearing went to, kind of file it down. And you can use that bit because you're only really working on half the bit. So you're not that, that uh, as long as you mill that nub, you're not really plunging in because you're already going to have kind of a relief cut. And I would do a relief cut, uh, Stephen. If your OG is going to cut down three-eighths of an inch, I would use an end mill first, and I would run a profile cut that three-eighths of an inch to create a relief so that my OG, uh, since it doesn't have a cutter on the bottom, since I just milled off this uh, little bearing spindle nut, uh, it can't plunge because there's no cutter on the bottom, then I would definitely run a relief cut. But if you have a true CNC OG bit that is uh, has a cutter on the bottom, you don't need the relief cut. But yes, you can. Bum, bum, bum. Ronnie says, uh, Laney, where would I find a description for the keys uh, you use? Uh, an example, T for tangent. Um, you would find those in your Vetric software uh, under help keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts. Uh, when you open up the keyboard shortcuts, uh, it will show you all of the keyboard shortcuts. Um, for uh, uh, different operations and all. Now keep in mind, uh, some keys are used. Some keys are used in more than one type of operation. The T and just a general operation, general shortcuts. The T opens up the uh, scale form, the sizing form, uh, in the you know from the transform objects menu. But when I'm in the polyline tool. And I'm working with you know a circle that has a tangent and everything. Um, then the T is my T for tangent line. And now that is only new. The T uh, shortcut is only new and only available uh, in 9.5, I believe. That just came available. The T for tangents, the ability to work with tangents, became available in 9.5. 9.5. But keyboard shortcuts under the help menu in the Vetric software will show you all the keyboard shortcuts and things. Now, also, alternatively, guys and girls, under the help contents, help contents under the help menu, um, if I scroll down, you'll see the same menus that you see in your software. And let's say I wanted to learn more about the polyline tool. I can click on the polyline tool here and then um, click on it again here. And it's going to take me to the uh, polyline tool. And then right here, uh, it tells me my keyboard shortcuts. And to create a line tangent, 
from the point of an arc, uh, you know, hover over the arc and uh, press the T. So, you know, uh, in the help contents, you click, it's all interactive now. So if I go to the menu of the tool that I want to use, and my line tool is in this menu here, and then I find that line tool and click on it, it tells me all about my polyline tool, all my keyboard shortcuts and things, and there's that shortcut for the T for tangents. All right, so uh, definitely your help contents and your keyboard shortcuts, uh, those are two good, great menus to use. Um, Jim Horton uh, says, thanks. So basically an inlay uh, in the corner or make a fancy uh, uh, an edge. Uh, I have so many more ideas now. Yes, Jim. Yeah, basically since it's almost like an inlay. Now in this case, it'd be a profile cut. That's why I did the radius uh, in the heart. And of course I would want to radius uh, this as well uh, since it's gonna be the pocket cut. Um, the inside corner is gonna be sharp here, right? The inside corner is going to be sharp because I'm cutting on the, you know, that or outside corner, should I say, is going to be sharp. But when I go to cut this piece, my quarter inch end mill is going to create a radius here, right? So how do we get that radius? How do we get that radius here? One, I can use my fillet tool, right? And I can just radius that out like that. Uh, and then over here, I would do basically uh, that same thing, you know, so those two parts fit together, right? Uh, two, I could have used the offset tool in a sense as well, but you want to make sure that that router bit can get in there and cut. That's why I created that radius on that heart. Uh, and if you would have done an inlay toolpath type of deal, uh, inlay toolpath, uh, it would basically be, um, because it's two males in a sense, you're two, a profile to profile, that's, that's the more appropriate toolpath to use for this. But an inlay toolpath automatically calculates for those radiuses and stuff and everything. But we're not really doing a pocket cut in one, it's two profile cuts, so it's two males in a sense. Um, and uh, just use your fillet tool be an easier way to do it. All right, let's see here. David Kinsey says, Laney, are you very familiar with shortcut keys? But uh, you are very familiar uh, with shortcut keys. But for those of us that are not, is there a cheat sheet which will show us the shortcut keys? Yes, David, and I just showed where it was. It's under the help menu, keyboard shortcuts. Help menu, keyboard shortcuts. Um, thanks, David. This is exactly what I was trying to say running. Um, uh, yes. All right. Kevin Wilkerson. Okay. Thanks. And Ronald saying, okay, thanks. All right. So we made it through the list of, uh, backed up, um, questions and answers and stuff. Uh, how are we doing so far? Let's see here. It's 820. So we're not doing too bad. An hour and 20 minutes in, uh, you guys got any more for me or are we, uh, we questioned out. Did, did I hit you with everything? Uh, really, uh, once again, take the opportunity to, uh, any obstacles that you're running into, uh, now's the time, right? To overcome those obstacles. If you get stuck somewhere and you can't quite figure out how to do something, whether it's VCAR Pro, Aspire, Modeling, whatever, shoot that question out to me and I'm happy to answer it. We'll let this go on for another, uh, a few, quite a few moments and, uh, then we'll, we'll call it a night. Uh, I do these questions and answers, uh, every so often, these Q and A classes, so we can do this, so we can ask these questions and get these answers and everything, um, and um, and and help. You know, there's questions you always have, and rather than you know, you know, at that moment you call or text me and stuff, but there might be just general questions that you don't think to call or you don't want to call and stuff like that. Now's the time during these Q and A's to uh, to get those answers. Um. Okay, David Kinsey. Uh, how would you recommend learning G code used in Vetric? All right, G code is not used in Vetric. G, G code is uh, created by the toolpath of Vetric. You're not actually working with G code um, and everything, but it is always good to know what G code is, right? So there are two ways to do that. Number one, uh, you can go into the help menu of your Planet CNC uh, TNG software and there is a G-code manual. 
Uh, in that G code manual, uh, this will tell you uh, different G codes and what they are, and as well as miscellaneous codes. Uh, they it tell you operators and things and all, so that's a good way to learn, uh, uh, you know, some things. But uh, one of the best ways uh, that, you know, uh, learning about all, all the G codes and kind of what their definitions are or what they mean or what they do, uh, besides the manual, the G code manual in TNG, is to actually Google G code, okay? Believe it or not, if we Google G-C-O-D-E uh, in Google and we go to Wikipedia, our friendly updated no hell source and everything, and we scroll down, um, you're going to uh, see different types because there's all types of codes. There's all types of codes. There's A codes, G codes, all this. But anyway, um, but if we scroll down a little further, uh, all of our G codes from G0 to, I think, G100, yep, G100, uh, will tell you what that G code is and give you a different uh, de definition. Now, if it has to do, if that code has to do with milling on the flat table as well as turning, then it will provide the definition for both and kind of tell you what it means in the milling process and what it means in the turning process. If we scroll down even further... Uh, our miscellaneous codes like M3, right? M3. We should all know what M3 means. That means turn the spindle on. Uh, it is a clockwise rotation. Now, for some reason, if you ever wanted to do a counterclockwise rotation, that's an M4 code. Uh, spindle on in the counterclockwise rotation. If you have that ability, if your spindle has that ability to do, do clockwise motions and all. But M3 is turn the spindle or router on. And then M5 is spindle stop, turn the router off or spindle off. Um, M6 that you guys see, you see that in your G codes, M6, uh, you know, uh, T1, M6, tool one, M6, automatic tool change. You guys don't have an automatic tool changer, which is why we removed that T1, M6 from the uh, header of the G code uh, in our updated post processors. We don't have an automatic tool changer yet. Hint, hint for 2019, we're looking into a machine, uh, a, a, a newer unit, a uh, little bit bigger, uh, but with an automatic tool changer um, that uh, kind of um, is a cousin of uh, the 2440. But this is a great way to learn about G codes, okay? Uh, it really is. Uh, this is, uh, I'm self-taught on G code, uh, and this is what I've learned. And then, of course, uh, you know, now I write G code, uh, different codes, like for the threads, internal threads and all that stuff. Now, the external threads, we can cut with a simple V. Uh, we, we can create that toolpath in the Vetric on a rotary. Uh, like if we're making like a bolt and a nut type of thing or, a, a, a let's say, a vice or what have you. Um, the external threads on that spindle, we create those in the Vetric software with the wrapping gadget or the wrap rotary tool. Um but, um, uh, yeah, learning G-code and, and, and everything is a great way. And then, of course, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of resources where, you know, uh, you can do it. You don't necessarily need to go to school for it, but, uh, you know, there's books. There's all kinds of things. I'm not big. A, uh, if it's an e-book or, you know, a, a, a audio book, wonderful. Uh, but if I had to sit down and read it, uh, it's hard for me. Now, something like that where I, I, get a de I get what it is and the definition, what it does. What does this code do? That's not hard. But if I, if I have to go into some scientific explanation and I'm reading a book about it, it's going to put me to sleep. Now, if it's an audio book, uh, I just sleep while I'm listening to it and let my subconscious absorb all that information. <laughs> all right. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, hey, Cynthia, how are you doing? Uh, Lainey, if you get a chance, can you please tell me how to update uh, MK3, please? Um, now, Cynthia, you have either a MK3 uh, board or an MK4, or a 2 board, sorry, not 4. Um, and it's either an MK3-4 or an MK2-4 board. Uh, you can find that by TNG. Now, if you have an MK24 and you want to upgrade to an MK34 so you can, you know, upgrade to TNG and all that stuff, you're going to go to digitalwoodcarver.com uh, and on our website, 
we'll give an, uh, a shameless plug to digitalwoodcarver.com since it is sponsoring Spindle TV. Uh, digitalwoodcarver.com, we're going to go to shop replacement parts under the shop menu. And if we scroll all the way down, you will see uh, this here. MK34 TNG controller conversion kit. This is the upgrade conversion kit for the uh, MK24 to upgrade to the MK34. Now, if you're referring to that you have an MK3 and you want to migrate over to TNG uh, from Planet CNC USB controller software, uh, make sure that your CNC USB controller software is up to the latest date, meaning the latest version uh, and let's let's take a look at what that version is. It's going to be um, uh, 2.10.1807.2601. But if I come into planet-cnc.com and I go to software under products, uh, under software, if I choose my download right here, it's the only CNC USB controller, 2.10.1807.2601. You want to download that and update your current CNC USB controller before you download and install the Planet CNC TNG for Windows uh, and migrate over. You need to make sure your USB controller is upgraded before you migrate over. Uh, if you don't, then you won't be able to connect or upgrade your board to TNG and everything. It won't. It won't take the firmware. So you got to make sure you're up to date. And that's where a lot of people had a lot of. Uh, issue with back in the day. Uh, now it's kind of become common knowledge. All right. So, Cynthia, hopefully one of those two answers answered your question. If not, rephrase it a little bit and rewrite it down below. All right. Uh, Patrick, cramming prosecute. <laughs> Tramming steps, uh, Patrick Ball, tramming steps. Okay, so tramming your CNC uh, basically means that we, our cutter, let's let's grab, let's draw a board here, and uh, let's get uh, let's get uh, fancy with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a wide cutter, a wide cutter just for reference sakes, and uh, let's go, let's draw a collet, and then let's draw a router. All right, so let's, uh, my anal retentiveness is about to kick in. Let's get, grab this and this, and let's uh, center them up. Let's grab both of those and that, and center them up. And then let's take and trim, 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 trim. All right, so your router out of tram means one of two things. Uh, it means that your router is your your router is tilted and your bit is hitting on one side more than the other in either the Y direction or if this was or if we were looking at a side view in the X direction. Okay, so either one. And so you want to tramming uh, means that basically we are leveling out uh, the router, we are leveling out the uh, router. Let me get back. Let me get me trammed again. Uh, we're leveling out the router so that when we are planning, we're making good contact. Now, uh, depending on your CNC machine, I'll talk about the digital wood carvers, but depending on your CNC machine, there should be mounting brackets and everything that you would loosen and adjust and stuff. Now, on the digital wood carver, the router is mounted to a mounting plate, and then there's a mounting block that wraps around the router. You got to use your imaginations with this guy's, uh, you know, but that block. Uh, that mounting block is um, on the back. It's mounted to the, uh, secured to the mounting plate by two bolts. These bolts have oblong holes, so you can loosen these bolts, and that will allow you to tram uh, this router in the Y direction. 
okay? You can adjust uh, those uh, and tram in the Y direction, all right? Now, as far as tramming in the X direction, um, if uh, you can't take and just loosen this bracket and adjust the router itself, like if you can't get enough adjustment out of the router itself by loosening the bracket uh, from that's gripping the router uh, to get that X tram, then you're going to need to shim. Uh, you're going to, there's, there's four bolts. Uh, let's see here. There's four bolts. One, two, three, four. And depending on which way you need to trim, uh, you know, uh, or tram, should I say, uh, you will shim these out. You will shim that plate out, uh, in one direction or the other, uh, to get your X tram and everything. Um, now, uh, there's a lot of different ways to see if you're out of tram and things like that. A lot of people use, um, a lot of people use, uh, dial indicators. Um, you know, you can uh, do some DIY, um, uh, hell, uh, you could take a board with a nail in it pretty much. And if you're touching here and not touching there or touching up front and not in the back, you know, you can kind of gauge it that way. Um, and everything but the best uh, gauge of it is is uh, put a large diameter bit in run uh, the do it do like a planing tool pad taking a few thousandths of an inch off or what have you uh, and uh, you know like a pocket cut and uh, see if you have you know grooves if you're making steps you know because if that bit is digging in on one side more than the other then when it mills you're going to end up with steps in your board, right? You're gonna end up with those grooves and everything in your board and stuff. And, you, and as it steps over, you're gonna get those grooves all the way around, you know, and you're gonna have these little stair steps and everything. That means you're out of tram, okay? So on the digital wood carver, uh, and let me move everything back where I was. Bear with me a second. Uh, on the digital wood carver, you're either going to be adjusting the mounting plate. You, if you can loosen the router and get the adjustment out of the router uh, itself, great. But if not, then loosen the mounting plate bolts, uh, the mounting bracket, the gripper, whatever you want to call it, uh, the router bracket. Uh, and you can adjust your y-axis there or you can adjust your shim for the X on those That's how you would do it on the digital wood carver. as far as your other CNC's. I'm not sure uh, Some CNC companies build in uh, you know set screws and stuff for tramming uh, And some you know pretty much probably the same similar kind of situation as this it all depends uh, Okay, so Patrick hopefully that helped out answer your question um david kenzie you're welcome roy thanks gotta go thanks roy for joining us uh cynthia nobles uh wonderful and hello dave gatton how are you doing buddy welcome uh to a open q a uh where uh people are hitting me with their questions and i'm doing my best to give them the answers to help them overcome their obstacles you have any more questions guys fire away it's uh 8 35 we're going to kind of um uh let's see here seven eight we've already been at it about an hour and a half uh we've answered a lot of questions uh rapid fire type uh scenario uh let's go maybe about 15 20 more minutes and then we will call it a night and uh we'll go back to carving or watching tv in my case watching tv while i'm carving that type of thing all right, Patrick, hopefully that answered your question uh, and um, uh, uh, helps you out uh, with that. <clears throat> all right. Hit me with your best shot. Anybody got any other questions? Now, I don't have all the answers, guys and girls. I'm just going to tell you uh, that right away. So you, there, you could stump me uh, and we'd have to kind of look it up together or I'd have to get back with you on it. Uh, I do. I am not albeit uh, I do not know uh, everything. Uh, however, I have uh, pretty much from 1,265 so customers 
uh, spending uh, you know 15 to 18 hours a day on the phone uh, answering all types of scenarios and questions and everything uh, we've been you know we've seen a lot done a lot uh, overcome a lot in things and so that reservoir of information of all those different scenarios and things that we've come across uh, is me kind of uh, feeding that information back to you so that when you run into that obstacle uh, you you know what to do uh, any questions on uh, anything else we got about come on let's go we got about 15 more minutes guys if not we'll call it a night and uh, I got two open Dr. Peppers and I don't know which one's which. It's not that one. That one's flat. It's this one. <laughs> I don't know why I have a half drink Dr. Pepper sitting on my desk. Um, but it is. I got to throw it away. All right. Easiest way, William Edlin, easiest way to wrap a text all the way around a circle. Easiest way to wrap text all the way around a circle. All right, first of all, we need a circle, right? Uh, second of all, we need some text. Uh, let's go into our text tool. And uh, let's see here. The DWC Awards. Um Let's go with a Tahoma font and let's go with a size of one, ooh, not point 0.1. Let's go point 0.25. All right, so let's zoom in here. So we got text, we've got a circle. Now, the easiest way to wrap text in a circle is your wrap tool, uh, which is uh, called Edit Text Spacing and Curve. Curve. Um, and uh, what this does, now this allows me to curve the text, okay? And um, you see that little, that little node point at the bottom there? Well, if I bring my text down onto my curve, and I drag, let's see, let's snap that there. Bring this down. When my text is perfectly wrapped, uh, you know, I should be pretty much centered on that arc there, that center point. Now, to wrap it all the way around a circle, then I would use the wrap text along curve tool, okay? Uh, I could use my, uh, this is only a short thing of text, so I could use my radius here and I could, you know, kind of try to drag this down as much as I can to try to get that, you know, get that wrapped all the way around, but that text isn't gonna wrap around that circle because it's not big enough, right? It's not wide enough in things. Um, so, uh, let's use a, an alternative tool. Let's use our wrap text along curve tool. We take our text. We need to have a single line of text selected and a curve to wrap it to. Okay. Now I want to, I'm on the inside. I want to be on the other side of the text and then I'm going to increase my spacing Okay, and I want to uh, align the text to the curve. I want to be, I want to start in the middle or maybe the left side or middle or what have you. Um, but no matter what I do, um, 
no matter what I do, uh, it's not going to fit at current maintaining the current text size. So I could scale it to fit the curve. Now it's wrapping all the way around that circle. And if I need to scale it down or up or, or, or what have you, you know, depending on what I want to do with it, of course I would go, you know, down and I would reduce my scaling, you know, however far I wanted to wrap. But the wrap text along a curve tool is going to get you all the way around. Okay. It's going to get you all the way around. Um, your edit text and curve tool is going to get you 180 degrees. Uh, but then you can you can wrap it, but it's got your circles got to match the diameter. Now, if your circle is bigger than your letters, then you're going to be using the text on a curve tool, wrapping the text along a curve, whether it be a straight line curve, a circular curve, a wavy line, whatever. This is the tool and the easiest way to do it. OK, so in order to do that, in order to. Uh, do that you have to have a in order for this tool to work it's grayed out unless you have a single line of text and the curve you want to wrap it to selected now it's going to want to throw the text in a odd like we're on the inside so if I check this off now I'm on the outside now I need to align the text to the curve to get everything kind of to flow with the curve and then I'm going to scale the text to fit the curve and it's going to wrap it all the way around. Then I got to reduce the scaling to get what I want. You know, bring my size down, my text spacing down a little bit, uh, you know, uh, depending on what I want. And then, of course, um, you know, uh, I want to go into my rotate tool. All right. And on my rotate tool, uh, on my text and everything, I need to rotate off the center. If my circle is perfectly centered, it should be. Um, let's find out. Let's get my circle centered. Let's do this. Make sure my circle is centered. I think it is. I believe it is. Uh, F9. Oops, I had both things. Uh, this one. F9 centered. Yeah. Okay. Wrap. Wrap text on the other side, scale to fit the curve, bring that down just a little bit, align it to the curve, bring my spacing down a little, which reduces my speed. Now, if I want to revolve this around, now, of course, look, it's backwards, right? The DWC Awards, right? Uh, it's not really backwards. We just got to rotate it. So if I rotate my text, Okay, here's my rotation point right here. I want to bring that to center. Bam. Uh, that rotation dot right there. I want to bring that to center. And that allows me to revolve that text around that circle. Right? So then I can position it how I want. And ta-da. All right. So, William, hopefully that answers your question. By the way, uh, when you open up uh, something, if you're rotating, uh, to find the pivot, you know, to find the pivot point, uh, you grab your middle box here and left click and the pivot point will show up. Then that pivot point can be dragged anywhere, you know, uh, so you can rotate. Okay. Now, if I drag that pivot point over to my T, right? Now I'm pivoting off of that T. Isn't that cool? All right. Enough fun and games. All right. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? All right. We're going to call it uh, a night here in just a minute. I want to thank you all for coming out and asking questions and making it a fun event. Hopefully you picked up something from this. Uh, hopefully there's a little tip or trick or uh, uh, some information that you could pull from it. Um, uh, to kind of get you, you know, some information and all. And uh, let's see here. Uh, William follows up with, thanks. What if the DWC portion of the text, uh, what if you want the DWC portion of the text to wrap the lower left corner so the side of the D, W, and C Align to the curve. Uh, 
bear with me on that one. I, I got I, I to gotta read it again. Um, what if you want the DWC, so out of these three words, though DWC awards, we're focusing on DWC. If you want that portion of text to wrap the lower left corner so that the side of the D, the W, and the C align next to the curve. All right, William, first of all, lower left corner. Uh, there's no corners in a circle, so help me out with that one, brother. Uh, help me out with that one. Wrap the lower left corner so the side of the D, the W, and the C align next to the curve. Now, if you are referring to... Um, <clears throat> bear with me a moment. I'm, 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 I don't think I'm getting what you're, what you're, what you're saying, but I'm gonna. I have no idea if this is what you're referring to, William. Help me out here on this one, buddy, because I am uh, at a loss. Uh, but from what I gather, you're, you said, if you want the DWC portion of the text to wrap the lower left corner, that's where I'm lost because there's no corners on a circle. So the side of the D, W, and C to align next to the curve. Well, that's aligning next to the curve. So that's what I took away from that question. Tell me if I'm wrong or right, or please help uh, by rephrasing that just a little bit differently so I can get what you want. All right. Lower left quadrant of the circle, such as you have a date on a coin. Okay. So let's undo. Okay. So if I want to be in the lower left corner here, uh, like a date and everything, um, let's say that this was a date. Let's let's put a date in since he said date here. Um, let's click on this and let's go 1879. Right? That's when we found it. Uh, I'm going to take and make that date a uh, quarter inch tall. All right. And let's say I'm in this lower left quadrant. Uh, and I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. And then I'm going to use on that one, I'm going to use the text curve tool. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, pull that text and everything uh, to align to the inside of that curve. You know, until I get that radius, whatever it may be, um, you know, in that lower left corner. Now again, that might not be, um, that might not be uh, what you're referring to. So let's see here. Yes, with D, then W would touch on the right side of the W and so forth, uh, right side of the C. Oh, so if you want the letters touching each other and then wrapping, um, you're going to uh, have to, one, uh, you'll have to do the edit text and curve tool individually on all three words. Uh, and then you're going to have to get your spacing tool. If I come in here and just start clicking, 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 clicking. Oh, too far. Hold your shift key to push them apart. 
uh, ooh, you know, Let's see if I can get that, uh, That one's gonna be hard. Uh, so on that one, I would actually have to convert that. And move my D over a little bit closer. Um, but your edit tech, you know, right now when I wrap this text all the way around, it spread that text out, but we can still, we can still use um, our edit text and spacing tool uh, here. Uh, you know, we can still use our edit text and spacing tool uh, to reduce our spacing. But you got to keep in mind, as you reduce the spacing, you're reducing the wrap. You know, um, so uh, let's see here. Yes, instead of the one touching at the base, it should touch at the left side of the one. You're throwing me off. Um, William, I, <laughs> I'm not getting... All right, so right now, none of the letters are touching at the base. Um, but on the left side, instead of the one touching at the base it should be touching at the left side of the one so the left side of the one over here <laughs> now what you're talking about it's on the left side of the one all right uh you'll have to uh, william again you'll have to let's uh, get on the phone with me one-on-one -on -one and let's take a look at what you're trying to ask because i'm not getting it i'm not it's not translating very well and um it's not translating very well in the question all right so um howard you're welcome uh, you know uh from time to time we do do these q and a's uh, to help, uh, you know, answer some of those oddball questions that you just uh, don't feel like calling to ask and all. Uh, it's a great time to get those answers. And plus, some of the questions that you ask, others want to know the answer as well. So it's a great thing to do, and I do them every once in a while. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, he probably does, Tippy. <laughs> <laughs> he probably does want uh, the one turned, uh, you know, 90 degrees. Uh, that's what I was. That's what I was doing was rotating at 90 degrees. Um, but uh, I was. I'm not getting it. So uh, that would be one where we'd have to jump on TeamViewer together. He and I can control each other's screen and we can lay it out and and uh, I can give him the answer uh, because it's not translating very well in uh, the questions. Uh, all right, four more minutes, four more minutes. It's going to be nine o'clock and we're going to call it a night. We're going to say my goodbyes. Um, 2000, uh, uh, keep this in mind. Here's some announcements. I posted them in the digital wood carver owners group and all, uh, this year contest end of the year contest for you guys and girls. Uh, we want to be, uh, showing off your, your projects at the woodworking shows, uh, we're doing a patriotic theme, so firefighters, uh, law enforcement, uh, EMTs, first responders, military, uh, uh, you know, veterans, Coast Guard, everything. Um, uh, create a project and everything, and submit it to us. Uh, and uh, the uh, we want the actual project submitted to us so we can hang it on our display at the woodworking shows. Uh, and uh, we got four prizes to give away.
first prize is an eight-piece Amana bit set worth three hundred dollars. Second prize is a four-piece bit set worth one hundred sixty dollars. Uh, third prize is an engraving bit, uh, diamond engraving bit for the twenty-four forty or the mini, whichever unit you have, uh, for seventy-five dollars. And then fourth place is going to be a dust brush uh, for the mini or the um, twenty-four forty. Uh, we're thirty nine ninety five, so ninety nine, so thirty nine ninety nine. We got uh, we got some prizes to give away. We want to see your entries. Uh, you got one month to get them in. We need them in by no later than Jan. We need to receive them no later than January one. And keep it in mind with Christmas and holiday shipping and all that stuff. Uh, the sooner the better. And uh, you know it's only the twenty sixth. Uh, there's plenty of time to get a project in for a chance to win some cool prizes and stuff. Um, uh, the Woodworking Shows are starting in January. You can check out thewoodworkingshows.com, thewoodworkingshows, plural, dot com, uh, for a schedule of what show we're going to be at in what state. We're doing uh, 15 states in 14 weeks, uh, or 14 states in 15 weeks. There's a week off in there somewhere. Um, and we're going to be all out and about uh, demoing. Uh, we would like to have some volunteers at the shows. Um, if you're a digital woodcarver customer, and you have a there's a woodworking show near you we would love you to come spend time at our booth uh on saturday or sunday uh friday or saturday should i say uh sunday is a kind of a slow day um to help out with answering questions and just uh you know giving your your uh input to uh the attendees and stuff uh you get a digital woodcarver shirt and free admission to the show uh so we're looking for volunteers if there's going to be a woodworking show in your area please reach out to me if you would be interested in coming out and hanging out with us for a couple of days all right uh you also get access to the free uh to the advanced training class uh, that i hold there uh which is generally a 50 dollars entry fee you get that for free if you're uh if you happen to be there on saturday uh, and stuff so keep that in mind we'd love to have some volunteers uh if you're interested uh, just need to know what show you're interested in attending in your shirt size so we can have a, a, a digital woodcarver shirt ready for you to wear during the show. All right, so uh, the woodworking show is out of the way. Uh, four days left on the Black Friday sale uh, for everybody, not just digital woodcarver customers. Uh, we have units on sale. We have uh, router bits and routers and accessories. Um, you know, for customers only, we have software upgrades uh, discounted. And everything we can't upgrade non-customers unfortunately with the Vetric software only customers digital woodcarver customers but uh four days left uh, check out digitalwoodcarver.com for that and be good to go um yes ronnie i did a class on tiling there's some great videos on tiling but yes i will do another class on tiling for because we have some new customers and stuff as well that would learn to uh, want to learn about tiling and um uh, i'll do that let's um uh Let's do, there's not a whole lot to tiling, so let's do next Monday, we'll do a class on tiling. Uh, we'll cover tiling in the first half, and then we will follow up with, uh, hold on a second, I got to go back up and scroll and see what my class require, requests were. We got a class on the request for the dovetailing and jig and everything. Um, threads, inside and outside threads. Uh, let's do let's let's do that. Uh, we will um, we'll have kind of a split class next week. Uh, wait before I talk out of turn. Let me look and see what date that is. Uh, for a second. So Monday is the third. Uh, December 3rd. We will not have class on Monday. I will be driving back from Indiana, so most likely it'll be Tuesday the 4th. Uh, Tuesday the 4th that the class will be. It'll be postponed to Tuesday the 4th instead of Monday the 3rd, because uh, I'll be driving back from Indiana. I'll be up in Indiana for the next four days. Um, and so, uh, when we come back, we'll do a class on tiling. Uh, first half on tiling, because it's really straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, to you know to, to, to explain and stuff and then we will uh, we'll do a class on internal and external threads twofer we'll do a twofer all right all right ladies and gentlemen it's 901 I want to thank you for joining me I really enjoyed uh, this evening um, 
if you have any questions, I'm always available. Uh, we have a new phone number, 833-DWC-CNC1, extension 1 for sales questions, extension 2 for support. Um, both of them come to me. <laughs> but if I'm not available, bro, answer. But anyway, uh, definitely check that out. Uh, and give us a call if you have any questions and things. And until next time, I'll see you soon. See you guys. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.